I know. So and that's, I, that's why I'm like, I don't want to compete with what's going on here and put the things out because I've watched enough shows. shows that say, like, all right, don't put things out there before the police begin. Because then you don't know if somebody really knows or if they just saw it on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. let's do this. Um, I think for, while you're doing this, it's going to be completely okay to ignore your phone and the media and everyone, right? Okay. So let's get this out of the way. I think it'll really clear your mind a little bit, right? All right. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we put a halt on the phone, on texting people, on Good Morning America, all those stuff. No, I haven't responded to okay. any of Let's only focus on this. Yeah. yeah. Let's focus on this, let's knock it out, and then let's talk. Okay. All right? All right. All right. And you Carly, you'll come in. I'll go get you when we're done. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So go ahead and have a seat right here, Chris. Sit on this? Yep, I know. It's, I'll explain what that is here in a little bit, yeah. but you don't have to worry. It, it's not on or anything right now. It's not gonna. Okay. It's not gonna buzz you or anything. I've never, I've, I've never done this before. I know. A lot of people haven't had polygraphs before. It's not like a normal thing that people go through. Um, okay. A lot of people, like obviously in law enforcement and places like that, they have to go through polygraphs for their job. But other than that, most people never take a polygraph in their entire life. So. Yes, yeah, so I have like no idea like what to. <laughs> yeah, so how are you feeling today? I'm sick to my stomach, honestly. Like, the first day I thought, okay, she was just somewhere. Sure. And after yesterday, all the activity at my house, I was, I didn't know, it, it went to the other extreme. I was just, I've just been like sick to my stomach that either somebody has her or she's in trouble and the kids are not safe either. Right, right. Well, and I think that's totally awesome that you're here today. I mean, I commend you. We do this in all of our missing person cases, so don't think that we're just singling you out like, oh my gosh, they want me to take a polygraph. Anytime, you know, someone was the last person to see people or, you know, there's it's a missing person case, we start from the inside and we work out. I mean, that's pretty much what we do. So I've done um, polygraphs on the Jessica Ridgway case. I don't know if you were here for that. Uh, the, the name sounds familiar. The girl that went missing in Westminster. And oh, okay. that, yeah. And then uh, just the one that we had in Thornton um, last year or the year before. Um, so we do this all the time. So don't please don't think that you're being singled out. Like this is this is one way that um, if you didn't have anything to do with it, that we can t let the investigators know, the people that really do need to know, that are looking for your wife and your little girls, um, to let them know. Like you know what? Don't focus on Chris. Focus over here because obviously we've already cleared him. He's good to go. Now focus on the real person that did tell to this. You know okay. to to Shannon and um, the little girl. So okay. okay. So I am, uh, my name is Tammy, if you can call me Tammy, I'm an agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, so it's the CBI, it's kind of like the FBI, but mm -hmm. for Colorado. Okay. Um, so we, what our role is, um, just so you know, is anytime a law enforcement agency or a district attorney's office or the governor needs assistance with a case, they can call the CBI to come out and assist them. Mm -hmm. So obviously in this, you know, type of case, um, they're calling in all the resources that they can, which includes me, um, who works out of the Denver office, and I also do polygraphs. So they asked me if I would uh, be willing to come here and chat with you and, and hopefully get you cleared up and, and on your way, because mm -hmm. it sounds like that's what you're here for, and, and yeah, that's awesome, mm -hmm. because that's mostly what people want to do is like, dude, you're not feeling the wrong person. Like, I just want to show you I had nothing to do with this, and then you guys can get on your way and, yeah. you know, do your investigation somewhere else. Okay. So. Because that, that helps us, because then we don't have to keep focusing on Chris. Does that make sense Thanks, to you? Yeah. Okay. Um, this polygraph today is going to be recorded. Okay. Obviously, it would be dumb if I didn't, because what if at the end I said, you said whatever, and you really didn't say it? Obviously, they could go back and look at the recording. Uh, there's a camera right there. And there's also a backup digital recording that I'm doing. Okay. It fails me the second I try and trust it. It, it always fails me. So, um, so you said that um, your cell phone, is it off right now? Yeah, that would be great because um, we can't have anything like buzzing, vibrating, ringing, that kind of stuff. So um, this will take um, at least a couple hours um, right. to do the polygraph just because it's a real structured type of interview process. I have to go through a bunch of things with you. Um, you're going to get the same polygraph that I give, you know, I gave someone last week. So um, it's very structured and we go, you know, in order and that kind of stuff. And you're going to know the wording to all the questions I'm going to ask you on the test. Um, before we even take the polygraph. So don't, don't, a lot of people come in here and they think, oh, they're just gonna, you know, attach all these components to me and then just start asking me random questions that I've never heard before and of course I'm gonna react to that. 
That's not at all how poly polygraph works. Not That's what I thought yeah, you're actually going to probably know more about polygraphs than anyone before you leave here today, just because I explain everything to you and how everything works. Okay. Um, Obviously, you're probably nervous about taking today's test. Honestly, I would think something was wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming mm -hmm. in here to take a polygraph. Yeah. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide, it is nerve-wracking. Oh, and yeah. I have taken tons of polygraphs, obviously, in my training. Um, I went to 10 weeks for training. I've been a polygrapher about, for about five years. Um, I went to the best school in the country. So I want you to have confidence in the fact that if you had nothing to do with this disappearance, like we're going to find that out today, okay? I have the best training that they offer in the United States. Um, I, we use the most validated testing, um, that, the way I'm going to ask you the question. So believe me, if you had nothing to do with this, I will be able to show them that today. Okay? Right. So that should give you some confidence that, um, you know, this is how like you're going to be cleared today if you had nothing to do with it, okay? Yeah. Um, there's actually only, you know, nervousness or anxiety cannot cause you to fail a polygraph. A lot of people think that too, oh. that if they're really nervous that it could cause them to fail. Um, if that were the case, no one would be allowed to take polygraphs because every single person is nervous or anxious about taking the polygraph, okay? I thought that's how it worked. On nervousness? Yeah. No. <laughs> there's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? Um, the first way would be if you fail to follow my instructions. I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to sit still, how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? okay. The second way would be if you choose to lie to me today. Okay. Lie to me today, okay? Um, obviously, this is about 100% truth. Um, even if there's, you know, something that you didn't tell the investigators, you know, since Monday, I guess, is when you and the, and the police were involved. If there's something that you didn't tell them since Monday, like, that is totally fine. Like, I get it. You know, people aren't going to remember every single detail every time they mm -hmm. talk to someone. As long as you tell me what the truth is today, you will have no problem with passing, okay? Mm -hmm. I promise you that. And obviously, I mean, I hope that, you know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today. Exactly. Right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with mm -hmm. Shanann and the little girl's disappearance. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. And it's Celeste and Bella, is that right? Yeah, I'll, I'll call her CC too. CC, okay, that, okay. That, that comes up. Okay, perfect. So, and I know very, um, sm very small amounts about the case. Okay. Um, just because I want to know less about the case because I want you to be able to tell me about the case. I don't want to have some preconceived notions about the case and that's why I don't want you to assume that I already know details because you told Detective so and so, um, you know, that kind of stuff. I want you to be able to tell me like you were telling someone for the very first time about what happened when we get into actually talking about what happened, okay? Um, obviously, Chris, you are not under arrest. I have no plans on arresting you. Um, at any point today, if you decide you want to leave, the door is right there. There is a, it locks us in here. Oh, no, <laughs> there, babe. yeah, I saw that last night. So there's a key in there now, so you can, um, if you just turn the key, it lets you out, okay? Mm -hmm. And at any point today, even after all these components are attached to you, if you decide at that point, you know what, I don't want to take this polygraph, I don't want to be here, this is BS, whatever, that is completely fine. Just please allow me to unattach my components before you drag my $6,000 instrument on the floor <laughs> and run out of here. Oh, um, and yeah. it's kind of a little maze back here, so I will show you the way out at any point if you decide, you know what, I don't want to take this polygraph, I don't want to be here, I don't want to do this. That is completely fine. The door does have to be shut for privacy just because um, noise does affect the polygraph. And um, I will read you your rights today, and that's just because the polygraph um, components are pretty restrictive. You know, they go around your chest and stuff, and you may feel at some point that you're not free to leave, but like I said before, at any point, I will unattach all the components and, and show you the way out if you decide, even in the middle of the polygraph, if you don't want to continue to take it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you kind of a road map of where we're going to go today, just okay. so you know what to expect and that kind of stuff, okay? So we're going to first start by going over a rights and consent form, and that's that um, Miranda rights form. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear it on TV shows constantly. Most kids can recite their Miranda rights. Um, we're going to go over that, and again, it's just so that you know you're free to leave and that um, you're not under arrest, okay? And then we're going to do a consent form, and that's just something that's required by my bosses to say that you're actually consenting to um, the CDI doing a polygraph on you, okay? Um, the, after that, we do a biographical and a medical form, um, and that's basically to make sure that you're a suitable subject to take the actual polygraph. I want to make sure that you didn't smoke, you know, 10 bowls of weed, you know, the night before. 
I wish that didn't normally happen, but a lot of people smoke drugs before they come in here because they're really nervous and they're trying to calm themselves down. Some people take a lot of meditation. Some people hear voices. Um, all of those things are things that I cannot um, conduct a polygraph on someone if, if they have those things going on. So I just need to make sure that none of that stuff is affecting you. You seem very lucid. You're talking to me. You're making sense. You know, you're not jittery, you're not moving around, that kind of stuff. So I don't think we're going to have any issues, but we just, I want to vet all of that out and just kind of, you know, make sure that you had enough sleep and you're not, I mean, obviously no one's getting a lot of sleep yeah. um, probably since Monday, but um, just so we can talk about all of that, okay? Sure. Um, and then after that, we're going to discuss the issue of why you're here. Okay, I want to know everything you know, and again, I don't want you to assume that I already know something. I want you to kind of start from the beginning and like telling someone, maybe, you know, a friend that you hadn't talked to since any of this has happened, and you're basically having to relay all of the details of exactly what happened with Shanann and the girls, okay? Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, we're actually going to take a bathroom break. I'm going to let you take a break. You can use the bathroom, get something to drink. That water there is for you if you need that at any point today. And then you're going to come back in here. And we're, I'm going to explain to you how and why the polygraph works. Again, you're probably going to know more about polygraph than you even care to know before you leave here. Um, I'm going to explain how it works. And then uh, we're going to go over the questions that are going to be on the test. And like I said before, you're going to know the words to every single question. So it's not that, um, and we're going to discuss that even before we even take the polygraph, like what those questions mean. and and just so you are completely clear in your mind, when Tammy asked me this question, this is exactly what she means, this is exactly exactly what she's asking, and this is the answer that I have for that question. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go over those. I get I let you practice answering them like two or three times. So I mean we'll go through them repeatedly. If you need me to go over them four or five times, just you know before we actually take the test, I'm more than happy to do that too. I want you very comfortable with the questions and that you know what they mean and, and how you're going to answer them, okay? Um, after that, we're going to go, um, we're actually going to do a practice test. And again, that just lets me know that you're a suitable subject to take the actual polygraph. And then after that, we actually get into the actual testing. So that's why it takes a long time, is because there is a pretty big process that goes along with it. Okay. Yeah. So did you, um, you're not working today, right? No. Do you have a date that you're going back to work? Not at the moment. No. How long have you worked for Anadarko? January 2015. So about three and a half years almost. Yeah. Do you like it there? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I worked for Covenant Testing Technologies before that. Well, what is that person? That's a contract company for oil and gas. Oh, and okay. Before that I worked for Ford for 11 years as a technician. Oh my goodness. So does that translate into No, well, it's, a, it's mechanical. I mean, okay. like, I like to fix things. And when I was like, when I moved out here, I worked along my Ford. Okay. And I moved, I moved up pretty fast there, but I hit that like, kind of plateau, that kind of just like I couldn't go, it got stagnant. Mm -hmm. And I was having this carpal tunnel syndrome, both my hands, and mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was bad. Like I was doing this like all day, you know, like it was, it was bad. Yeah. So you still have that? I don't even know. Can you get rid of carpal tunnel? Oh, like it was just the onset of it. Like oh. it wasn't like full on need to have surgery type thing, but like now it's like it's so much better. Like it's I don't have to. Yeah, it doesn't have the pain. Like there's a lot of mechanical things you do in oil and gas, but it was it's not as repetitive as the car industry is. So are you? And excuse my language. Are you a worker bee or are you like a boss guy? A little bit of both. Okay. I'm a, I'm your hands uh, dirty too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, like a, I'm a field coordinator right okay. now for for the area. I have uh, six route operators and two rover operators. Okay. So that's what we uh, I'm kind of just over them right now and kind of we kind of game plan like what kind of we look on the computer on our well summary screen and kind of go from there to see what kind of problems we might have throughout the day. Sure. And just kind of like, alright, oh, this is what we need to do. We need to go here, there, there, there. Okay. Got everybody's doing kind of middle part of the day. And they might need help and try to get everybody checked out by like three, three thirty or something like that. Oh, that's nice. But yeah. you don't need to work for your. Yeah, we start for your like six, six thirty, somewhere around there. So. Super early. Oh yeah, yeah, to get there early. <laughs> you just never know what could happen. So. That's true. That is true. So what? Do you have an ID on you, Chris, that I could see? So I have the biographical form has some like our license numbers and that kind of stuff. So I'll just keep this just for a second until I do the other form. 
Are you named after anyone? No. No? My middle name, just my dad's middle name, but other than that, no. Okay. If I mispronounce your wife's name, please, like, correct me. I don't know. Just, just, think think of, so uh, just think of shenanigans. Shenanigans. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah. I got it. That's the way she, she tells people. Does her family call her Shanine? Um, so the way they, they spelled it, it was like Shan Ann, like uh -huh. with an apostrophe, but she just called it Shan Ann. So it's kind of, it's, 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 she was named after Shanana. Right. Is that nice? Okay. Okay, so. Is it B-E-L-L-A? For both, Bella, yes. Okay. And Celeste is C-E-L-E-S-T. -E. Perfect. All with the same last name. Yes. Last, right, okay. So, um, Chris, this is that advice on a rights form. This just says that um, Agent Tammy Lee says, I'm an agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, and I wish to talk to you about, obviously, the disappearance of uh, Shanann, <laughs> sorry, see, Bella, and Celeste Watts, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and to have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning, if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of those rights for the red to you, Chris? So I'll just have you write a yes when we get to that. And then having those rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now and obviously go through with the polygraph? Okay, perfect. So what I want you to do is go ahead and answer both of those as yeses, if you still agree with that, and then sign and date that signature line if you would. Have you always been a Tar Heels fan? Yes. 15? It is, yeah. My son is like a huge Tar Heels fan. I don't even know why he likes them, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe because the Nuggets suck. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's what Carl used to, he used to coach here too, and he was a Carolina guy. Oh, he was? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you go to any, like, do the Nuggets play for them? Oh, no, uh, North Carolina is the, that's the uh, college. Oh, college. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Sorry. You're right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting all my teams mixed up. You're right. Did you go to college then? No, I wish I did. That was yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, where did you go to college? I went to NASCAR Tech in, in North Carolina as well. NASCAR is the name of it? Yeah, it was, a, it was a mechanical school. Oh, really? Yeah. Very cool. I focused on regular automotive and then the NASCAR portion as well. Oh, very cool. I you learned a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah is yeah. that like kind of elite? Mechanical school stuff. It was. It was part of the Universal Technical Institute. Like it was part of their program, plus the NASCAR part. Plus I went to the Ford, the FAC program there as well. So. Wow, that's awesome. Do you have any other nicknames or anything that people call you? Just Chris. Just Chris. And some like just random ones at work. Just doesn't make any sense. So. Like what? Oh, uh, some call me like Rain Man because like I. When I go to a site or something, like if I do it once, I'll remember it, and this, this is one of those one of those things. Like, do you remember like phone numbers and license plates? Oh, like, like that? well, that stuff. I don't. I don't really pay attention to that stuff. But it was like when I was really young, my grandma used to always quiz me on like uh, state capitals like every day, and like when I was waiting for my sister to come out from from middle school or stuff like that, she would, she was always like just pinging stuff off my memory. Really? And it just like it, everything. That's, I think that's how it built. Yeah. So what it was and what it is. Oh, yeah. So your grandma did that? Yeah. My mom's mom. Is she still alive? No, she passed a few years ago. Was she pretty old? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, she was. Was a good life? Yeah, she was. Good. Were you close with your grandparents? Yeah, I went over to her house every morning, every uh, afternoon after school. And oh, help her out. Nice. Being outside, stuff on the inside. And she always cooked me lunch, some German food. Colonels and goulash, schnitzel, oh. all kind of stuff like that. My first husband was German, so we had German sausage and ice all the time. And then just certain German food is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Love it. So, Shanann's um, legal name is hyphenated? I've never seen it written that way, but oh, okay. that's the way her parents always said. That's what I tell they did it. Okay. Shan and apostrophe A and N. Okay. It's easier to say it when I spell it out, yeah. but for 
And you keep wanting to say Shannon, of course, but there's a lot of people call her Shannon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her parents sometimes call her Shannon. Have you talked to her parents at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they being oh. pretty decent? And mm -hmm. Good. Are they coming here? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Who, like, my dad's here. here. Your dad's here. Is there yeah. any other family members of yours coming? Not right now. No. Just my dad came out and was for support. He just got here this morning. That's fine. What a nice kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is that consent that my bosses require. And this just says Agent Tammy Lee has advised me that she's investigating the matter of obviously the disappearance again of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. I hear say that to the best of my knowledge, I'm in good physical and mental health. I also state that no force, duress, or undue influence has been used against me, and that I am consenting to this polygraph interview on my own free will. I understand that the results of this process will be released to, obviously, the Frederick Police Department, the District Attorney's Office, and the FBI. Um, it would be very silly for you to sit in here and take a polygraph if I couldn't release your results of hopefully passing to the people that need to know. Does right. that make sense yeah. to you? And it says, I hereby give my voluntary consent to undergo a polygraph interview, and I understand that this process is subject to both audio and video recording and monitoring, which we had already talked about, okay? So if you agree with that consent, you can just sign and date it. So where did you stay last night? I know that Nick and Amanda's house. Nick, Nick, and Nick and Amanda there. And how do you know them? So Amanda used to be a director at Primrose School where um, Bell and TC go. But then she she transferred to another place and Shanann was getting her own thrive. And that's how they how they met. She so the um, Amanda transferred to another Primrose? Yeah. Okay. So like Shanann Shanann couldn't like talk to them about Thrive, the direct sales business, like while they're at, like they, were, they weren't allowed to like talk like, you know, outside, like if their child goes there, there's some about the school rules or something oh, like okay. that. So once she left, she talked to her about Thrive and got and got her on Thrive and then me and Nick started running together here and there and that's how we met. So is she like, is she like a, what do they call them, a downline from Chase? Yes. Okay. So she's like one of the sellers that... Yeah, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I don't even understand Thrive, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm even a chick, and I don't understand what all of that Thrive stuff is. Uh, it's vitamins, it? it's vitamins mm -hmm. and minerals, and it's all plant-based, non-GMO stuff. It's really, like, it's really healthy for you. Yeah. Do you do it? Yeah. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was 245 pounds when I started. No way. Yep. How long ago was that? 2016. Wow. I've been doing it for a while. Oh, my gosh. So... I think I, the only thing I know about Thrive is like patches or something. Is that yeah. what that is? Well, it's a three step. You have like vitamins. You have two capsules you take when you wake up, two pills. Okay. And then you take a shake with water and throw on a patch. Do you have a patch on right now? No, no. Oh, I want to see what a patch looks like. And it's just like a little square piece that just kind of goes on your skin and it's like it absorbs, like it opens like up your pores a little bit and the bottoms kind of absorb like through your skin, like time release throughout the day. Like can you tell you feel better when you have the patch mm -hmm. on? Really? Yeah. Crazy. How much are patches? Just the patches themselves? Uh-huh. Are you, are you supposed to do this in combination with all the other The three patches? steps. Is, oh, okay. That's what I call the three steps. The like... I feel like you could sell it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you know enough about it, you she, can sell it. She has me on the... Uh, as, as like I signed up underneath her. Oh, okay. So like you know I'm part of her team. Oh, okay. But she kind of runs that part of it because she knows like I'm not the type of seller. I'm not a seller. Yeah. I don't like. You're not a salesman. Yeah, you know, like I would like say too much. She says about the product. Like, like sometimes it's not so great because of this or. Yeah, it's like I would just give out like too much information about the product instead of just having like them call her. Do you sell it to any of the people that you work with? There's one person that I work with that uses it. Who is that? Troy. Troy? Yeah, he works. I think I heard that name. Troy McCoy or yeah. something? That's mm -hmm. a funny name. <laughs> is yeah, that call the real McCoy. The real McCoy. <laughs> Everyone's like, he's kind of like, actually named him Troy McCoy. <laughs> super cute. So he works for you, is that right? Or he works with me. He's, he's the other field coordinator. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot more experience than I do. He worked in Kansas before he came here. Kind of shows you the ropes. 
yeah, he showed me a lot of all different things, and I picked up a few things that he didn't know, and just kind of like we worked together pretty well. Nice. Is this um, the correct address for you? Yeah, it yeah. actually is. This is Troy Mary? Yes. Oh, yes. So, do your family hang out at all? A few times, yeah. His kids are older. Oh, okay. Like, how old are they? Like 11, 10, 8, and 7. Oh, okay. Somewhere around there. There's four kids? Two, two of them. Oh, okay. Like a blended family? Yeah. I think he met her when she had had two kids already. Oh. Yeah. So, what's your um, social security number, Chris? 241. Okay. Six seven three three eight seven. And your cell phone? Now zero. Three zero nine. One seven zero two. And how? Uh, what's your date of birth? Five sixteen eighty five. How old does that make you today? Thirty three. And where were you born? Up? In Fayetteville, North Carolina. I spell Fayetteville. F A Y E T T E V I L L E. Did you speak stay yet, Bill? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this says you're 225. Is that correct? 180. Okay. Is that a lie on here? What, what, year? <laughs> what year was that? No, it was 2014. No, I'll switch my five to twenty five then. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, I'm getting some more weight. What what do you think made you gain weight then? Celeste pregnancy. Oh really? I gained more weight than she did. You're a sympathetic eater. <laughs> when I went and got her Oreos, I ate a few on the way upstairs. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that happened a lot. Now can you do the thrive stuff when you're pregnant? You yes. safe for that? Yeah. Yeah, because it's all natural or whatever. Yeah. Okay. No, certain, there's about different variants of the patches that she can't use because of like some of it's for weight loss. Oh, you don't want to lose weight while you're pregnant, right? That's no, or it's more like for fat loss, and that's like they, they recommend not using that type of patch. Okay. So, so as far as um, growing up goes, and I'm actually done with that. She's done with that away. Thank you so much. Um, who all was in your family? Who did you live with? Uh, uh, my mom and dad. Okay. My sister. And your sister? Yeah. So just two kids? Yes. Okay, and what's your sister's name? Jamie. Have you, um, is Jamie coming or have you talked to Jamie? I've talked to Jamie and her husband. Yeah. 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 How old is Jamie? So she'll be 40 this year. Okay. She's 39 right now. Okay. So she's a little. Yeah, she's seven years older than me. Yeah. So you were at home by yourself for a little while, huh? Yeah, we, we didn't really get close until I got like older because that was such a big age discrepancy. Mm -hmm. So. So you get along with her well now, oh, yeah. and her husband. So yeah. Do they have kids? Two. Two kids? Yep. How old are their kids? Ten and seven. Ten and seven. Do you yeah. get to see them very often? Or? I just saw them like when I was in North Carolina. Oh, you did? Yep. Nice. When were you in North Carolina? So it was the August 1st to the 7th. Nice. And how far did you get in school? So I graduated from high school and I got through the NASCAR Tech program. Nice. So you've got a GED or an actual diploma? So it's like a certificate, I guess. It's not really a diploma because it doesn't have like English, math, science there. It's just strictly like mechanical. No, but through high school. Oh, yeah, I got a diploma. You got a diploma. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. And then you got a, I'm sorry. I mean, like, like a certificate from NASCAR Tech that I completed their programs. Like, I guess it can't be a degree without, you know, like English, math, and science and stuff like that. Did you always know that that's what you wanted to do with the car stuff? Uh, it was, if I wanted, if I could go back, like, I'd probably just use that more of a, like, a hobby mm -hmm. and maybe, like, dive more into the technology part of it, like, because we had, like, an academy of applied technology when I was there mm -hmm. in the, in the mm -hmm. high school I was in, maybe go into more of the computer programming part of it. So are you, like, a pretty techie guy? No, I'll say techie, but I understand, like, numbers and math a lot. Like, that's, like, with uh, working on these wells. Like there's a lot of programming, a lot of setting up these wells to make them run, and like using the numbers, the pressures to optimize the wells is something. You already must be like I. Uh, I, yeah, do that, 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 that's that's why, I do that job. I do that job. That's why I helped Troy. Like he knows more of like the, the stuff that was like ten years ago type oh. of thing, and I know more about. I've kind of like grasped the more of the stuff that's happening right now. Sure. 
and that's how like we kind of like work together. He's like, if you have to work on a pumping unit, like, like, all right, I'll help. You're not that's sure. why you work on like a normal well and setting up like the setting it up. He's just like, here you go. Mm -hmm. Like I will just watch. But does that translate into like, um, like my husband is a techie guy in our family, so like he sets up all our routers. Like he, like when I get a new phone, he sets up my phone for me just because he. Understand. He has that brain that I don't have as far as being a techie person. So, are you mm -hmm. kind of that person in your family? I, 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 yeah, I, do that. I can do that kind of stuff. Um, I can't like do code or anything. Like right. That, but You're not writing the computer code? No, I can't. <laughs> one, one. That's not right. all that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Awesome. So, in your job now, like, what is your title? So, field coordinator. Field coordinator. Okay. And you've done that for three and a half years or whatever? So, I was, I was, I was an operator. Oh. Uh, like, well, it's it's the same. Like you're you're an operator. You're operating the oil and gas locations. This was just, I was the operator, and then I was the operator, but slash rover. Like I would be going around helping people, and now I've went up to field coordinator. It's like now I just kind of like tell people like this is where we need to go, and like we need help. Let's go there. Let's so go. when did you actually get promoted to that? When one of our other field coordinators. He got went to a different group, the H G Ops group, and our other field coordinator had to go down to Texas to help. So me and Troy got elevated up. So that's what happened. Okay. We we're just kind of backfilling. We didn't know like if it was permanent or not, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be permanent. So wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So tell me about um, like kind of give me a synopsis of your childhood, and, like what your parents did for a living. You know, my you my dad was a parts manager for Ford dealership. Okay, it's kind of one of the cars things came right. from. See it. And my mom, she was like a like a secretary and notary for a used car, used car dealership. Oh, okay. So like, yeah, she, oh, she's like, more into it. she sold the cars too, but like she's more of a secretary and notary and kind of, she bounced around a couple different used car dealerships. My dad stayed at the same one, changed the name a little, it changed names, then he went to like a different one, but it was the same, he did the same thing and he did like parts manager and body shop manager okay. and that's where he's still at now. So how did you say you grew up as far as like um, your family structure is? Were you guys religious? Was there a lot of discipline in the home? You know, like, or who was the disciplinarian in the home? Growing so up? like we went to church, I would say not like every Sunday, but pretty regularly, you know. And what church did you guys go to? It was like First Baptist Church. Okay. And I mean, discipline, I, I was the quiet kid. I was the, you know, I just kind of all the, I mean, my sister was the rebellious one that always, you know. You're like, I'm a good one. It's like I never really like it. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister was the one that got the most of the, the she, she was the one that showed me, like, I, that's what I don't want to do. Right. <laughs> I wake up to my mom and my sister pretty much arguing every every morning. That's all I went Okay. They're like, I don't want to wear this. I don't want to wear that. I'm like, okay. And you're like, uh, Mom, what do you want me to wear? I'll um, wear whatever you want. I'll just go in the closet and do it, you know, somewhere. I have two phones too, and it's hard to keep track of them. So yeah, my work phones are on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you said your dad was a disciplinarian, but he yeah. just. I mean, it was verbal, like, cause like, if the other mm -hmm. was, I knew something was like, was like, okay, that, that's okay. <laughs> I'm good there. Like, right. Did anyone struggle with like drug or alcohol abuse or anything like that in your family? No, I mean, my dad did at one point, but it was like after I left. Like after I graduated and everything, and I just like, because my sister, she came, she would leave and she'd come back, leave and come back, leave and come back. She never like, like run away kind of thing? Always like, like, she would move, like, she went to East Carolina, then that didn't work out, so she came back home, she moved to a different place, and that didn't work out, she came back home type thing. And like, when I left, I was like, I was on my own and I was like self sufficient, and I never came back, and I think that hit them pretty hard. So they expected you to come back to you? Oh, he, he just, he, well, he was used to me being around. Like, I was, you know, he's my hero, he's my best friend. Your dad is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's where I was, that's where I think that kind of hurt him a little bit, because, like, once I left, I, you know, I didn't move back. So, tell me, when did you, so you're talking about for college? Like, as soon as you graduated? Yeah. You moved so, is NASCAR close to where you guys live? Like no, like, once I graduated high school, I moved to Mooresville, North Carolina. That's about two hours away. Okay. And that's. That's where and I live. Never I never, I never moved back. I mean, I came back to visit, but I never moved back. Okay. So you go to college. Uh, is it four-year college, two-year college? And that program I finished in fifty-two weeks. So it was like a year and a half, almost two. Okay. Oh, I can't wait. That's like a year. Oh, seventy-two weeks. Sorry. Okay. Seventy-two weeks. So a year and a half. Um, and then where did you go after that? I worked at Morrisville Ford. 
and worked there for till 2012. So that was like 2003. That's so when I was going to NASCAR Tech, and I was working there as like a porter, moving cars around, changing the world here and there type thing. And then once I graduated, they moved me into more of a like a line tech as far as like actually fixing things. Okay. So from 2003 to 2012, I was there. And 2012 to 2014, I was a mom off board. Okay. Did you have like any high school sweethearts or like girlfriends from NASCAR Tech or? Mm -hmm. There's like no. There's probably no girls at NASCAR Tech. No, I would imagine, but there was, there was like a handful of girls actually went there. So no, it was like I didn't have any, any girlfriends early after high school. Okay. So, what about when you got done with? Oh yeah, like other uh, girlfriends like that from in Mooresville mm -hmm. in there, but nothing really serious. Nothing serious. Yeah, I met Shannon in 2010. Oh, 2010. Yeah. Okay. And how long did you guys date before you got married? I'm assuming you were married. Yeah, uh, 2012 when we got married. Okay. Dated a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, does she live in Mooresville? She lived in Belmont at the time. So how did you meet her? Through my cousin's wife and her. My cousin's wife and Shanann, they knew each other from like, like a, from a wheel shop that she ran. That Shanann ran or the cousin's Sh wife? No, Shanann ran. She ran like three different stores. Like auto parts? People? Uh, wheels, tires, audio, custom stuff. Oh my gosh, you're just all in that. All <laughs> It's all like crazy. Um, okay, so we're going to, um, I'm just going to ask you some of the medical questions just to make again sure mm -hmm. that you're a suitable subject. And you said you've never taken a polygraph. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe your physical condition right now? Good, fair, or poor? I'll say good. Good. Okay. Have you had any major surgeries or injuries within the last six months? Are you any, in any discomfort right now? As far as like pain? Or like yeah. Mm, no, not really. You know, maybe mental anguish or whatever, but just like, yeah, like physical or like your stomach. Kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, you're not pregnant. Nope. Have you eaten in the last 24 hours? I had a pizza last night and protein shake this morning. So that's it. Okay. What time did you have the pizza? So right when I left here, so it was like 11. Okay. And what time did you have the protein shake? Probably about 7:30. Okay. Was that with all your three-step process? Mm -hmm. Okay. What time did you um, go to bed last night? Probably about 12.30. Okay. And what time did you get up? Probably about 5 and just kind of looked at my phone. Okay. And you, sh you stayed at the other, Amanda and Nick? Nick. Okay. Um, and how would you rate your sleep, good, fair, or poor? Is there anything came forward and fair? <laughs> um, I'll put it in the middle. Okay. Okay? I'll give you that box. Have you had any alcohol within the last 24 hours? Do you drink alcohol? Only with like if I'm going out somewhere, or, like with friends coming over. It's, I don't drink by myself. Okay. That's not. I don't think that's really. How often do would you say that you drink uh, in a given week? Like how many beverages would you have? If I drink something, just be like one or two. One or two beers. Or yeah, beer. I'll, I'll do. It no hard alcohol. No. Okay. Um, any legal or illegal drugs consumed within the last 24 to 48 hours? No. That includes even cough medicine, you know, mm -hmm. anything like that. No. So you just had um, vitamins, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So 
So now we, um, Chris, we're going to discuss the reason why you're here, okay? So now what I would like you to do is, again, kind of treat me like, um, you know, someone that has no idea about anything and that you actually have to start from the entire beginning, like kind of start when, um, I would say when you met Shanann, just kind of explain your relationship, I guess, just so I understand it um, as far as, you know, meeting in 2010 and, you know, when the kids came about and that kind of stuff. And then just bring me up to the point of, um, you know, yesterday. Okay. Well, that's you could. All right, so 2010, so we met, we met, we met pretty much through Facebook because of my cousin's wife. And she, like, recommended us as friends type thing, and that's how we kind of started talking. And our first date was at a movie theater. Didn't really impress her much, because, like, I was, like, it was actually a nice theater. I didn't really know what I was walking into as far as, like, I walked in, and there was, like, a doorman, and he was all dressed in a suit, and I was in camo shorts and DC shoes, and I was, like, yeah, I was, like, okay, hopefully I'm not, I'm very underdressed for this. But, like, I walk in, I see her, and she's all dressed really nice, and, like, she, she told me, like, like after the fact, like, man, I hope that's my item. <laughs> <laughs> kind of deal, like, because, like, we know what it looked like, but, like, I wasn't really dressed for the, for what we were doing. Then. But on the second day, I actually made a mistake again wearing the same thing because I kind of forgot what I wore. But I went to a kid rock concert, and, like, I think that's kind of where I went. I, I wore it over because, like, we actually got to, like, the actual concert, and, like, Forgot our, I, I forgot my ID, so I couldn't actually get in. So I actually ran back like two miles to the car and got it and came back. And I was just like, I mean, I was just like soaking wet. I was just like, it was like middle of July, August, and like South Carolina and humidity and everything like that. It's on Army base. So I was just like, ran back, got it, and everything like that. And then I think it was our next date, we actually went to Myrtle Beach. And like, she had lupus. Well, her lupus was really like acting up in North Carolina. So like like she had like these flare ups, joint pains, all that kind of thing. And we were driving back, like she laid on me pretty much the entire way back. And I think that's when like she realized like this guy's actually pretty pretty nice because like he didn't ask he didn't tell me like, all right, get off my lap or type thing. Like I just let her just rest on me the entire way back and it was like two and a half hour ride from Myrtle Beach to Charlotte, the Belmont area. But yeah, we just, everything flourished from there. Like in 2011, I, pr I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. Like that, that was around our anniversary. And um, I did a ride there on the beach at night. And I could tell, I mean, she was extremely tired. And I was like, I just want to do this. Like, I want to do it like today. And she knew like, like so why are you being so like persistent and get me like out here right now? I was like, oh, let's just, let's, let's just go out to the beach. It's a nice night. I proposed to her on the beach, said yes, and everybody was, Rides like static and everything, and she she loves. She's very organized. She's like OCD about like organization, putting things like like you saw like the pantry. She like everything was just like named in a container all the way down. Like it's very easy for if you just came into our house, you would you would know what stuff was. You would know like where everything was. It would be easy. So like everything was just she was planning the way. Everything was great, right. and then 2012. She were here, but she was planning the wedding from here. But everybody was back in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it was a guess you call destination wedding if you want, because they fly back for that. But we got married in it's like the Double Tree Hilton Hotel that was there. It was like in their court. It was in November, and it was underneath one of those big tents and everything. It was beautiful, and it went. It was it was, it was amazing, and we went to Myrtle Beach for the for the honeymoon. And then 2013, in December 17th, that's when Bella was born. Like, we've been trying for a while and nothing was happening as far as getting pregnant or whatnot. And she's, well, the thing was, she said, so since we're not getting pregnant, since it's not happening, like, I'm going to buy a supercharger for your car. I'm like, okay. And then it turned out that weekend we can see Bella. Oh, yeah. So we, she bought me a supercharger for my car. So it was just. Take that back? I would already put it on. <laughs> and it was actually like a special order like part that was getting a dealership. Okay. Stuff like that. So like it was it was ironic that it happened that, you know, like bought a supercharger for my car and then that would be getting confused Bella. And then um Bella was just a gift. I mean it, it, she didn't think she get she could get pregnant because of the lupus and everything like that. Like the doctor said it could happen, it might not, but 
it happened and it was it was a blessing in disguise right there. It's like, oh my goodness, this happened, you know? <laughs> so Did like, she have normal pregnancy? If uh, like with Bella's normal? Bella's was a uh, she had shoulder dystocia when she was born. So was it like her shoulder was I never know that she was turned. Oh, just turned? Yeah. That's where like they had it like push her out. So she had a vaginal birth? Oh yeah, yeah, all that. That was that was cord wasn't around her neck nope. or anything no. like that. No. Okay. Nothing like that. So Bella was born December seventeenth, twenty thirteen. And Bella was she was a gift, so you just go along with Bella and then around and CC was born this uh July seventeenth, twenty fifteen. And we had this whole little thing uh staged up with Bella in the crib and a little eviction notice. Like she was there and it, it worked out pretty well because she was just standing there crying like, you know, like I don't want this type of thing, you know. <laughs> Some of those that went like viral on Facebook, so that's weird. It would be yours. <laughs> yeah, it was, and she was just sitting there crying with a little eviction notice and she had on she had, she recorded it and it was really it was an amazing day just to see that. And then she, she left, she was, she was, I was there, like, she had a midwife for this one. So, like, they actually had me, like, oh, you can stand here and, like, you know, catch her. And, like, well, but Celeste came out, like, so fast that, like, I barely had a chance to go like this. And they moved me out of the way because she just, like, came out. So it was, I mean, Celeste, I was a lot better with Celeste because with Bella, I didn't really know, like, a lot like what I should do what I could do how to calm stuff like that like mm -hmm. you know burp right. swaddle everything like that like yeah, I didn't know yeah well yeah I, was, I had like no idea I just pretty much watched like all right how do you do this and then with Celeste it was more of like that's why Bella kind of like she's a mommy girl then when Cece was born did you care with Cece or Celeste no, okay. no all right when Cece was born it was more like all right I know what I know how to change the diaper. I know how to do all this. Like, exactly. like I can I can do this. I can help like a lot more. That's why Cece is more of a daddy's girl now. Like whenever she gets in trouble, it's just like she's in. Mm -hmm. And she then gets mad because like all right, just don't 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 cuddle her. For when she gets in trouble, like she's, she's in trouble. Leave her alone. Like she just bit Bella. You know, she just like hit Bella. Like, don't you know? Don't go, don't, 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 cut, don't coddle her. That's mm -hmm. where I'm going to coddle her. So it's like having them both around is just like absolutely, absolutely amazing. They're like two peas in a pod. Like, well, Celeste is more than rambunctious, just like all out. She either goes or she's sleeping type thing. So she's always, always getting in trouble, always like trying to find something to climb, jump off of. Like, Is that like you or is that like Shanann? Bella's more like me. She's more of a calm, just like she's cautious type thing like when cc i think fed off of bella a little bit as far as like all right she's 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 my sister she's the younger one she's or she's she's the youngest person in here besides me type thing and she kind of fed off, off, off of her and some of her friends that like you know came over and that cc just kind of like built that that attitude she was just like yeah she was she's around much just a little much again like if i'll show you a picture but comes off but like when she was on the plane coming back, I mean, she just had just like this space, like, like that, like, don't, don't, like, keep. But she was excited to be on it, or? Oh, it was just like, she was like being like, you can imagine a kid, a little kid in a plane in a seat, like, she feels like, she loves to move around, she doesn't like, you know, sitting in the same spot, mm -hmm. type thing. And then, um, when she told me about the third child, it was just like, our hope, let's see what we got now, let's see if we can, Boy or girl, I mean, we're trying for a boy, so now we're just like. Is it a boy? We haven't told anybody yet, but yeah, it is. Oh, it is? Yeah. Can right. they find that out that early, or? At 12 weeks, they could find out. Really. Uh, she had one, the ultrasound was last, last week. Let's see. Yeah, it was last week. So, found out it was. Were you both there for Yes. Time? Oh, nice. Yeah. So it was like right when we got back, so it was like this guy went back with an eight, so it was on the eighth, that was an ultrasound. Get my days mixed up like now. I'm not sure even what day it is right now. But yeah, we have an ultrasound. I'm thinking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday, all that kind of stuff, but like, yeah, we haven't told anybody yet, so. So both the girls were born out here, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so here. Bella was born at Good Samaritan. Um, Cece was born at Vista. Did um, Shan go through any like postpartum or anything no. like that with either of them? Mm, no. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And seeing 
anything like that. Good. Did she breastfeed? Yes. Both of them? Yes. Okay. Very cool. Bella was a little longer than Celeste. So she was, so Bella was how old when she got pregnant with Celeste? So they're about 19 months apart. Okay. So it's like 10 months old? Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you were like, oh my god. No, we, like, we didn't know if it, if it would happen again. So. That's true. So so were you guys even using protection or are you just like, it's not going to happen, so mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yeah, it is. It is, it is yeah. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay, so keep going from um, after Celeste was born. So after Celeste was born, I mean, we, we kind of thought, I mean, like, we kind of see how two kids went. Just the, I mean, they're just like rambunctious, you know, they're just, they're just sister love. And now they're four and three, that will be five in December. So it's like, if it happens, it happens as far as like having, like, she used fertility drugs on both Bella and Celeste. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay. Like, this, the third child now, it was, she was on like no medication, nothing like that, which is just on Thrive. Like, she's healthy, she feels healthier now. Mm -hmm. And then like, with, with the Thrive, she really thinks that like, I mean, we only tried like twice, and it happened. Oh. So she really thinks that it was more of like, being a healthier person, Sometimes just having the stress off, like, you know, I've had my kids, so this is just a bonus. If, you know, oh, yeah, I like that. Too, yeah, like, I could definitely, like... Seems like a lot of women think, oh, we're, you know, we can't get pregnant, and they have a baby, and then they're, you know, they're not worried about it anymore, so uh -huh. then they get pregnant again. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, anything would happen again. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, tell me about after that. So... It was just like, yeah, after, uh, we didn't think it would actually happen, so like, we really think that have being on, like, being a healthier, like, lifestyle, being healthier, really helped this, like, I mean, only really trying twice, and boom, and like, it happened, so it's just been... And when did she find out she was pregnant? I would say it was in, probably the first or second of June. Okay, mm -hmm. not very long ago. Yeah, and she's about 14, 15 weeks right now. Okay. So uh, why don't you bring me up to, let's start, why don't you start with like, um, if you guys went to North Carolina, so maybe just start for your, from the trip to North Carolina. I guess you met her there maybe for part of it, is that right? Yeah, like she was there, so we got back from, we went to a Thrive trip in San Diego, and it was the uh, end of June. Okay. And then, I think it was June 26th, last when we came back here, her dad was watching the kids. And then that same, like, later on that day, they flew to North Carolina. Okay. So why don't you kind of start there and just take me up until yesterday. Okay. And as so, detailed as you can. Okay. So, like, while they were in North Carolina, it was, like, they are there to see my family and obviously her family and just kind of, like, because they haven't seen the kids in a while as far as our kids. And um, so they were just there. Just, she had a couple things she wanted to do there as far as, like, like meeting up with her promoters and customers that she had a bunch over there in North Carolina so she was hoping that she could meet everybody else over there and have like her dad my her dad and mom and my mom and dad like have fun sorry with the kids mm -hmm. and um, babysitters heck yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was mainly like just a, a little family like little family vacation for for them right now, for them on that trip, just to, for everybody just to see the girls. And Celeste's birthday was during that in July 17th. Mm -hmm. So they had a birthday party there with um with like jumpy houses and stuff like that. And they FaceTimed me during it so I could see it. They didn't have a birthday party out here for her because it was, you know, when they got back it was in August, so. Right. <laughs> so but yeah, I got to FaceTime and watch it all. And it was pretty much just hanging out with family the entire time. Okay. Yeah. And I was here just going to work and working out and going running and just keeping keeping the house up and doing that and just I waited till it, my flight was July 31st and I flew out there for a week and I was I was I flew out there for weeks so I could fly back with them so we went so July 31st I got there stayed at mom and dad's house the next day we drove to the beach stayed there for about four or five days it was in Mer North Myrtle Beach. And we, first time the kids have seen the beach, so they are ecstatic. Obviously, seeing waves, being being in the sand, they love sand. <laughs> Unfortunately, they love sand, because it's just like you get them back, you just got to shower them off. Because Cece was so like into the the beach that I mean, her bathing suit was just full of seashells. 
<laughs> at least I'm like, oh, okay, let's just get this, get all this off of you and rinse you off, please. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was an awesome trip. Like just seeing them react to the to the ocean, and then we went to like Broadway at the beach. It was a in Broadway, it's like like an outdoor little mall, and they got to go in these like little. And like with a strap you in a harness and you get just to jump and jump like jump higher yeah. and yeah and balance less they just they love that they just love jumping that high it was amazing nice. yeah and then um i got i went to see my grandma my dad's mom she was in a nursing home so like she's some days she remembers people some days she doesn't and luckily that day she did remember me so that was that was really a good day mm-hmm. to go in there and went in there with Shannon and the kids and obviously like they had already been there a few times while they were there. Sure. Yeah, and they were uh she lights up when she sees other kids. My, my I call her Mama. That's what she always calls but uh Mama lights she light up it up when she sees the kids and she remembered me and that was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my dad came pick me up and I went over there and stayed with my parents for, for a day and just kinda like hung out with them, saw my sister, her husband their kids have a cookout and everything and it was awesome and then the next day we I think it was the 7th yeah August 7th yeah we went to her parents house got everything packed up ready to go and flew back here and then got back on later on that night on the 7th and then on the 8th I went back to work and then on the 10th that's when Shanann flew out to Arizona with uh, Nicole and I had the kids from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we went to a pool party on Saturday with uh, Jeremy Lindstrom's, uh, his son's turned four. And they had a little pool party and everything over there, or a little mini pool, and it was water balloon fights. It was that yeah, epic time. It was great. It was, it was awesome. That was awesome. It was just seeing their faces and seeing how much they I mean, they didn't really play with water balloons that much at all, so. She'd see, like, she would come over, she'd like, she put one right in my pocket and push, just smacked it. <laughs> While I wasn't looking, she's a, a little trickster. So it was, that was, that was funny. And drove home, got back home, ate, and it was a really awesome day. Okay. What happened after that? So that was, that was on Sunday, that was, that was on that Sunday. So got the kids back, got them all showered up, got them to bed, and, just pretty much waited around, waited around for hair from Shanann because that was she was flying back that night, and her plane got delayed because like there's like there's a lot of dust storms in Arizona, mm-hmm. and uh, there was like there's some other weather around that was delaying flights getting in there, and they didn't have a crew, that's why it was it was delayed. So her flight was supposed to get in around 11, but it didn't actually get in until about two. Mm-hmm. So it was about like you just going into this now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So about. Two o'clock, she came into bed. Like at about 1:48, my doorbell uh, picked up that she came in. But at 2 a.m., that's when she came in. She came into bed. And about four o'clock that morning, so my alarm went off. So that's why I usually get up, get ready for work and whatnot. So I get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, deodorant, all that kind of good. I don't really take a shower because I work out the old field, but like I'll take a shower when I get home. That thing. And uh, she told me the. The, when before she got in that like I want to wake up you know like when you get up just like take a shower get the airport off me type thing so like I woke her up about after I got ready and everything and then we had to talk about like the selling the house and about separation and stuff like that like it was an emotional conversation obviously we were both crying and after we talked it was she said she's going to take the kids to a friend's house and I should be back later on that day. So it's like, okay, that's fine. So I went downstairs and packed my lunch and filled my water jug and got my computer and everything and loaded my truck up and I went to work. And then I got, once I got to work, started started working and about seven, 7.40 or so, I saw a text her like, hey, you know, back her from her. I was like, okay, like, I didn't know where she was going. Like, I didn't know what friend's house she was taking them to or where she, what, what friends she was going to with the kids. So I was like, hey, you know, text me, you know, let me know where, where you went, where you took the kids. And I didn't hear from her. Like, it's normal for her not to respond to me because, like, when she has her direct sales, direct sales people, like, she'll get back to them first because, like, that, that's what she does. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, for her, like, not to respond back to me, uh, that's, that's happened plenty of times before. So I'm getting 
continue working and I know it's like it's about noon, she hasn't got back to me like, hey, you know, call me. Like I'll call her if you I called her once before that too. And then about twelve, ten, that's when I got a door bell alarm on my phone saying someone was at the front door and I was in the cold. And uh, so I called her and I was like, Hey, what's going on? So I got her from Shanann like all day and no texts, no calls, and I'm like, right, this is kinda of strange. So like Nicole was at the front door and she's like, Okay, her car's here, I can see her shoes, like, because we have this little little rectangular long window next to the door. And she could see her shoes right there and whatnot. She was like, Alright, something something's going on. So like she called me, she was like, Alright, like I can't get a hold of her, something's going on. And that's when I came home. That's when I started that's when I left to come home. So, um Nicole called me, was like, Alright, I'm just there's this gonna be a police officer here when you get here. I'm like, Okay. Like I was the case they couldn't get in because the latch from the top door was that's what, that's what we kind of put over just to make sure like you know like if the kids try to go out the front door they can because that's there but the keypad on the outside of the garage door doesn't work so like they had to wait until i got there i got the, the garage door opener i hit it we went inside the house and i mean cars there car seats are there purse is still there phone the phone's on the couch like her wedding ring sitting on the nightstand and it's like there's like no sign of bella Less her anywhere. And it's like the police officer, I forget what the police officer's name was, but he was there and he was just, once we found the phone, powered it up, and all the text messages like came through as far as everybody was reaching out to her and everything, like, hey, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Everything good? And there's just like, there's nothing there. Like, it was just like, it was a ghost town. And everything that was there just didn't make sense as far as like, why, like, what happened. So we started like reaching out to a bunch of people. Like, any, any of your friends that like anybody that had reached out already that you know like had a car seat or like, like had a kid in general, and nobody had heard from her. Nobody had. I mean, nobody had a clue. Like her mom did had reached out to her. My parents. I mean, nothing was there. And the, uh, the officer, the tech bomb, bomb over. Detective, I'm not sure if you know the people that are involved. Um, yeah, I can't remember how to say it. Oh, yeah, I think uh, Detective Baumhauer, he, he came, and uh, they're all, like, you know, take, taking questions from me, Nicole, her son, Nick, that was there, and then uh, went over to, uh, my, they talked to my neighbor, because he had the camera facing, like, he picks up a few different uh, angles and whatnot, and uh, watched his video, surveillance, didn't see anything as far as her leaving at all. So they're just like, all right, like, like, where like how like how this happened like like there's no like video of her like leaving the front at all so we're just we didn't know we we're just at a loss for words like all right what where is she like she would mislead everything here but even the kid's medicine was still there and i was like all right she needs that so we're just the only thing that was gone was really the kid's blankets like everything they slept with like you know celeste has like this big new york yankees blanket and a little dinosaur and like a little dog that that makes noises and a turtle and something out of the whole package. And Bella has two has two blankies, but one was still at the house, the other one was gone. And she had the dinosaur and a, like a little swan blanket. Her other little but we were we talked to the neighbor, we looked at other, anybody else that maybe had a camera somewhere but nothing was going on. They had other uh, community services like go into the houses, like, like, not, hey, have you, like, do you see anything? Like, do you have a camera? Do you see anything like that? And we just, we had nothing at all. And it was just like, all right, so I'm, at this point, I'm hoping, all right, she's at a friend's house, she's safe, and she's just, like, decompressing, or, like, she's just, she's safe. But, like, that night, like, as I'm, like, calling, like, hospitals and hotels, and just, like, there's, like, there's nothing, like, nothing there's nothing there like nobody's nobody's had her check in nobody there's nothing at all and then that was just dramatic because like I had I had every light in the house on just just in case like you know like yeah I went, I went late in bed but I didn't sleep I was just sitting there just like I had friends that came over Nick and Amanda came over for a little while and they showed support my friends Dave and Jeremy came over they showed support uh, Shannon's friend Lauren came over, she so support. Another friend, uh, Melissa, came by that I didn't know that she so support. Everybody's just like, I don't know like why this happened or how this happened, but like, I hope that she's okay, that thing. Mm -hmm. 
and just like I was just hoping that I would get that knock on the door or a phone call or a text. I mean, her phone, I mean, they have her phone, like hopefully maybe it's a number I don't know. Hopefully it's like, you know, like a burner, a burner phone or some, some kind of, some kind of like phone she bought and she could just text me and call me like, hey, I'm okay, something. Or just get a knock on the door and the kids just run in. And I was just like, like it didn't happen. And when I was going through like that night, just like trying to, just trying to process everything, like I miss like the kids like sitting at the dinner table and like having to tell them to eat their dinner. And like I miss them throwing their chicken nuggets at me. Like I was, when I went to their rooms, just kind of like, you know, make the beds. And it's like, I wasn't going to turn the rain machines on, you know, like I wasn't like, you know, going to read them a book. I wasn't going to like, I wasn't going to kiss them goodnight. I wasn't going to like, you know, do that. That wasn't going to play in the playroom. I wasn't giving them like their nightly snack, like their nighttime snack. I wasn't, you know, giving them their medicine. I wasn't, you know, getting them dressed for bed. I, all that, like, just, it just hit me. It's like, I'm not, I'm not turning the monitor on to watch them because they're not here. It's like, where are they? And that night was just like I didn't even want to stay in the house that night, but I knew I, I knew I had to just in case like maybe they came home, maybe they they would come in that front door, garage door, or something, something would happen. But nothing happened that night. So I just slayed in bed and took phone calls and texts from all our friends that were I couldn't sleep either, and just like just just asking for prayers, just asking prayers in general, just like these kids and her are going to come home. They're going to come home safe. And the next day, well, detective, he called me about 2 a.m. just saying, like, hey, we're going to do, like, the missing persons report, and I'll get that all, get that all going. But, yeah, it's, like, the next day, like, when everything, like, started happening as far as the news crews, like, pulling in and then all the canine units and the drones flying over my house it was just like it all set in like this is not she's she's not they think something happened because all this all this right here this means that okay my worst fear that's where this is going right now because i thought she was just at somebody's house and she was safe but now just going that the other direction with all this going on with the dogs coming in with the news the news media everything just kind of happening it's like all right this is this has gone to a totally different totally different direction and it's like I, I was i was when all my friends like were coming over to give me some support i knew that like all right like i, I was happy all my friends came over to support i didn't want to be alone at that point in time like this like that's this is the time you don't want to be alone at all and my friends are supporting me all through this, and I just want to find them. I want them to come home safe, like wherever they are. I hope they are safe, and I really, I really hope they can just come home. The uh, FBI agent uh, Graham, he's he's been really helpful. I mean, he didn't tell me what leads they have for today, but I'm hoping that it at least them coming home because mm -hmm. it just being in a house and not being able to tuck them in it's just it, it's it's heart wrenching it's earth shattering right now because that's those are my kids those are like like you made those kids you know like do you have kids or anything mm -hmm. okay, so like so like just not being able to like you know kiss them goodnight and saying I love you daddy or I miss you daddy or something like that you know because they were without me for five weeks and uh, it was, I got to FaceTime him every night. And it was just not not being able to do anything, like knowing that they were just here and not knowing where they are now. It's, it's, it's a nightmare right now. So um, thank you for explaining all that to me. Um, obviously I have more questions, so I may kind of piece it out, um, just going back just so I understand everything. Um, and you, you kept saying that you thought she was at a friend's house. Do you still think she's at a friend's house? At this point, I don't. Because all this, like, everything that's happened now... So what does that make you think of? 
it just makes me feel like either she vanished, like she she's had the kids and she's somewhere where she, like maybe possibly a hotel. But I don't think she's at a friend's house now, unless it's somebody I just don't know. Like if it's somebody I don't know, great. Like I just want her to be safe. But with all with with FBI here, with you know CBI here, with everything that's going on, like it makes me feel like all right, maybe somebody has her that's not that's not keeping her safe, or something terrible has happened, and that is that's the nightmare. And what would that terrible thing be? Did somebody hurt them? That's run to your mind sometimes? Hmm. I don't. I, 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 I can't. I don't want that to run through my mind, but it's it's running through my mind that somebody has hurt them. And that they are not safe. I don't really want them to be safe. Mm -hmm. I want them to come home. Right. And we want them to come home, too. Um, so let's, let's kind of break it down back to um, when Shanann went to Arizona. Mm -hmm. So what was she in Arizona for? Try it local. Oh, okay. I, I saw that I had been down there with some of the uh, upland leaders. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she, mostly women, like, you know, other people that work for her, you know, downline people. Or, yeah, or downline people, people or upline people and all that. Okay. And they just, you know, get fill their cup, I guess, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. They get there and they, you know, cheer them on and like, you can do more and mm -hmm. whatever. And I guess, do they teach them about new products? Yeah, although like there's a lot of training that goes involved with right. like how to talk to people and stuff like that and bring in more people type thing. Like, did, did Shanann make a lot of money doing this? Yeah, she made, she makes about as much as I do. Really? Yeah. And how much is that? Because I don't know how much you make. About 65, 70. Okay. She makes that much just selling yeah. thrive. Wow. How many people does she have underneath her? Like, <laughs> people that signed up underneath her are probably about 200. But like active people that promote it, it's, I mean, it's probably about 50 or so. But like, I, I didn't know if they knew or not. They I mean, reached out to you and told you that they knew? Or well, what? I, I told them like, you know, we were, you know, going to go through like with a separation and everything. Like, oh, we, we knew you guys were having some issues there and everything. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know. Did they tell you what Shannon had said? No. They just said they just, like, they saw her, like, and she, her emotional state, it wasn't the same as far as, like, they could tell something was, like, it was different about her. So in North Carolina, is that the first time you guys have ever talked about maybe not being together and maybe, you know, figuring out life mm -hmm. separately? Yeah. Okay. And was that more... Would you say you bringing it up to her or her bringing, Me bringing it up to her? Okay, okay. Did she ask you why, like why now? You know, or have a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah. what, what what did you say back to her? Yeah, it was more of just like I didn't feel that I didn't feel that connection anymore. Like I like fell out of love kind uh, of thing. Or well, yeah, what, it was. You describe it? Yeah, it was more of like I don't feel the same way that I used to. Like I don't. I don't think we have that connection anymore where like I can just like be myself and just like be everything that I need to be for you right now. And that's that's how I explained it to her. And she said what? She didn't like know really what to say. It was just like I I don't know I didn't see it, but it's like I wanna work on it and I wanna see where this can go. Like if we can fix it, like like either through a book or like counseling or So after something. your conversation with her, it was your This is in North Carolina. Right. Yeah. Belief that you guys would try and work on it together just to see if it would kinda work or Or just kinda like see where this like like we'll take this week like because it was an emotional week just because of everything we were, we were saying and like what we were th what we were thinking, like and all that, especially bringing another kid into the world. It's like we want that environment to be as like healthy as possible. Sure. Did you guys? I'm sorry, it's for being here. I'm gonna right, pump fine. this up a little bit. Um, did you guys sleep in the same bed while you were in, there? In uh, in North, or North uh, Carolina, yeah. Yeah, like there's there's a couple. I slept in the kids' room one time, or slept in the kids' room one time, and I slept on the couch another time. Is it just because of the tension? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a ten, there's tension in there. That's okay. good. And then when we got here, 
when we but, but when you're there, like, did you guys have sex at all? Or? No. No? Okay. Were you guys affectionate after the kiss at the airport? Not really. Okay. That's where, like, we, that's where we could feel like it wasn't, like, it wasn't really there at that point in time. Okay, and up until the point where she left, was it, you know, affectionate and... No. I mean, what was your sex life like? I mean, it was... I mean, the last time we had sex was in like May, like when the kid was born, or kid was conceived. So that would have been in May. That would have been, been like, cause she found out second week of June, so it would have been like May. Okay, and was there a um, celebration or something that you know? Did you guys go out? Did you have a date? Did you no. Know? No, she got me a few shirts that you know, had like a you know, um, said like Dad Code Fish and F3 type thing. Um, she had a couple shirts made, all the one of them a back rub type thing. But as far as when you had sex in May, mm -hmm. like, what was there something special about that? I know we we had you know talked about like having, like going through pros and cons of having another another child, and but like we didn't like have like a celebration like of having sex. So you guys like so you were talking about maybe having another kid yeah and then you were actually trying that night to have another kid. Yeah I think I, after we waited until she was like was like when she was like ovulating type thing. Was she keeping track of that? She, yeah she always has that on her phone. Like OCD right? It's like, a, like a cycle tracker okay. type thing and it tells you. Okay so did you find that sex was more like a job or did you really enjoy it with your wife as far as well, I, I, I never felt like it was a task. Okay. Like, like even that. like we're gonna do it now because I need to get pregnant, or whatever. Like no, like, like no, it, it it wasn't like I mean, whenever you're trying to have a kid, I mean, I you have to like plan that part as far as that goes. Sure. Because like you can't just like you know have sex every day or twice a day like to get pregnant. You have to like once and then kind of wait two days or something, whatever the formula is. Like she said, you have to wait like two days and then try again. Okay. But that's what that was. Okay. So before that time in May, how often would you say that you guys were having sex? Maybe like once or twice a week. Okay. So why do you think it significantly stopped right after she conceived in May? Like it was it's kind of hard to tell because we went through spark, little spurts where like maybe it wasn't like at once every every once or twice a week like there's times we went like a month or two like without without having sex like and sometimes like I would try and that would you know every she was tired or you know something was going on like she was just aggravated or something and she was like I know no, not tonight like type thing like I was usually one to initiate it mm -hmm. like but I'd say most times it was like I was shot down but that's I mean Married life, honestly. You just kept trying. <laughs> yeah, like you keep you try. I mean, like you never stop trying, because I mean, that's I mean, if you felt like it was a job or a task, you wouldn't try. Mhm. Mm but like you know, I I enjoyed having having sex with her, so I mean, okay. It was. As far as like um, North Carolina goes, like when you guys kind of broached the subject of maybe you know separating or whatever, um, did she accuse you of? You know, because I mean, I think it would be normal why she would actually oh, yeah. be like, yeah. "Who is it?" Like, you know, like yeah. the chick or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, like that, that, that kind of came up, you know. Like, and I was just like, you know, that would never happen. Like, you know, the kind of guy I am. Like, you, like we were at, I was at a, one of my friends' house, Jeremy. He said, like, you know, you're the type of guy that I could send you with my wife for a week and know nothing was gonna happen, type thing. Like, they know people know the kind of person I am solid guy. Yeah, like, I'm not the type of guy that's just going to say, all right, my well, wife's gone. Like, who's the, who's the girl, like, I can find for, this, like, five weeks? Like, no, that's not me. Like, I respect my wife, and she respects me. Like, she's, I, there's no anything that she could, she could, have, like, like, if she's somewhere safe right now, like, I don't think it would be with a guy. I mean, if it is, I'm fine. Like, I want her to be safe. I want the kids back home. If it was with a guy, great. I'd come back home. We'll talk about all that later. Mm -hmm. But like, I never had an inkling she would do the same, do anything to me, you know. So how did that come up from her? Like, what exactly did she say to you? Because of our like how, like our texts and calls were getting like shorter and everything like that. Like, she's like, like, are you having? I was like, no, I'm not having an affair. Like that is the last thing that should be on your mind. 
Did she bring up any other, I guess, in a woman's mind evidence as far as, you know, why she would think there would be someone else involved or anything like that? No, it's just kind of like, I was, like, whenever, like, she would call sometimes, I'd be out for a run or I'd be working out and she could tell, like, all right, you don't want to talk to me right now, let's just go work out type thing. It's like, like, when she was going, I would take that more time to kind of, like, you know, go, like, go run, go work out because, I mean, I had, had time to do it type mm-hmm. thing. Like, I would always make time to FaceTime with the kids and everything when she would call, like, you know, I would always make time to do it, like, especially, like, when the kids are awake and everything like that. Sure. But, like, she would, like, like, and, like, later on at night, you know, like, when I would just, sun goes down, I'd go out for a run because it's less hot, out, hot, hot outside. And, and would she accuse you of, like, doing other stuff while you were not answering your phone, or? Oh, no, like, she just, like, you know, she would ask me, like, hey, uh, can you, like, do this for me? Like, can you find this, like, medication, send me a picture of it? Can you like, like, find something at the house? I mean, little things like that. She knew I was at the house, so I mean, it's like, I'm, she had no reason to really have that, that fear in her head. But being away for you know, that amount of time and being pregnant and it's like that's going to run through her mind. Has she ever been away that long before? No. Okay. And you talk about you know her being pregnant or whatever. Like, how was she different when she was pregnant than when she wasn't pregnant? Well, I guess it's just you're just a little more more emotional in general. I just want to make sure that the red light. Yeah. Okay. Um, more emotional. Oh yeah, it's like, I mean that's that's normal. I mean her cravings hadn't really changed or anything like that, but just like you know, just more emotional and everything like that. Mhm. Would she kind of admit that, like, oh, yeah. I'm pregnant, whatever? Well, I mean, I guess she's like you know, she's just you know, she's with her mom and she gets rarely. You know, her mom's like really like she's full Italian, so like she's always like you know always just like gung ho about everything, mm-hmm. and it makes you know like really anxious sometimes. And like you know like it's it's a lot of stress being over there with you know her family and my family as far as like everybody. You know like she, she's over she's over there by herself with the kids. Do you guys all get along? Like does she I mean yeah, we all I mean pretty civil. Oh, you said that you went to your parents by yourself. Like, was there a reason why Shanann and the girls didn't go? Yeah, because there was a there was an incident where my mom had something in the house that CC could was kind of allergic to. What was that? It was some ice cream. And what did, what are your kids sick with? I guess uh, CC is allergic, allergic to tree nuts. Okay. And um, so not peanuts, but like my kids are allergic to peanuts, but not tree nuts. So yeah, so <laughs> peanuts is like a. I guess oh it's growing from the ground. Mm-hmm. So the tree nuts like pistachios and cashews and stuff like Those that. Those are the good ones. I know. And kiwi. Oh, Kiwi's okay. like grown like I guess the spores have like something that's related to tree nuts found out really? the hard way as well. But yeah, like there is an incident where she had something in the house as far as it was it was ice cream that C C couldn't have and my one of my sister's kids went and grabbed some, she was eating next to CC, and she, it was just a point where, like, Shannon said, I, they cannot come over here again, since, I mean, because CeCe's the one that kind of lo- would lunge as she would just grab, like, I mean, oh. if my sister's kid had, you know, so fast, you wouldn't even be able to you, you wouldn't know, because, I mean, like, how we figured out tree nuts was an issue is because CeCe had a little sliver of a cashew one day, a sliver, and mm-hmm. made her react. And her reaction has gotten worse over her her last panel was was a couple like a month two months ago or something like that, and her reaction was a little bit worse when they prick her back and everything. Mm-hmm. So like that that kind of drove Shannon to where like all right they can't come over ever again if you're gonna have this in this house and that kind of that's why that happened. When was that? Was that this during this trip or was that from before? It was during that five week span. Okay. Yeah and. They hadn't seen the kids in like two weeks when I got there, and she was like, "I think they can't come over. They can't go over there right now." What did you think about that? I was I was hurt. I was like, you know, I wanted my one of my parents to see their their grandbabies. You know, like even if it's just like the, I mean, it was we didn't even they didn't even FaceTime. So like like when I went over there, like I, I wanted to bring the kids, but like I respected her decision. Like okay, like if. Like, if you want the kids over there right now, it's fine. I just, I just need to see my parents, like, since I'm here. Like, I'm here for a week, you know, I want to at least, like, go over there, give them a hug, and see my sister, her husband, their kids as well, and just kind of just say, hey, hello, cook out, and just hung out. 
Do you know if Shanann told anyone in North Carolina about what was going on? Oh, I'm, sure, like, I'm sure she did. Who do you think she told? Oh, she probably told, uh, well, there's people here, I know Nicole probably knew, I know Kathy probably knew, but they, they, Nicole lives here, Kathy lives there, there's some of her good friends. But, like, would she have told any of her family or her friends in North Carolina? I'm not sure if her mom knew or not, if that was the case. Is she pretty close to her mom? Oh, yeah, she is, but I'm not sure if she, like, like, told her, like, the entire, like, thing about the whole, like, paint the, having something in the house. All right, I just mean, um, between you and her, sorry, the separation. Oh, and so, that. no, like, no. She no. didn't tell any of her family? No. And why do you know she didn't do that? Because she told me, so, like, she's not going to tell them. And, like, I knew she was confiding in a few of her friends because she told me that because she had not someone to talk to, but she didn't tell her mom or anything like that. Mm hmm Do you guys go to church? No, not here. No. No, we have you moved to Colorado yeah, no, we, the church? No. Okay. Like, we were talking about, like, you know, finding one for, you know, with the kids and everything. What about counseling? Did you guys talk about counseling? Yeah. Yeah, when did you guys talk about that? That was probably... We got back from the seventh, back to work on the eighth, so probably about the eighth or so. Oh, right before she left. Yeah. I guess she left on the tenth. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So what did what came of that when you guys talked about counseling? It's like I don't really think we really needed to go to counseling, so I've never like I don't. I mean, anything that we were saying to each other, I felt like we could just say it to each other mm -hmm. and not have to like you know go to go to somewhere from somebody's couch and talk to them about it. But like she said, like a couple of her friends that that were married have been to counseling like once or twice or three times and they're still going type of thing. Mm -hmm. But like I didn't feel like I really needed to, but I mean I was I mean I was open to the idea because I thought like all right if, if she really 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 like if this is gonna work may, maybe but like I really didn't really want to do it just because like I didn't think we needed to do that. I thought we could just like you know maybe just do it that way but it the disconnection was there. I didn't feel like it was going to help. Okay. So you get back on the 8th or 7th? On the 7th. Go back to work on the 8th. You went back to work on the 8th. Yeah. Okay. And what day is the 8th? Like of the week? Do you remember? 8th, 9th. So it would be a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. Because the 10th was a Friday. That's when she flew out. Okay. And then you work how many days? I worked. Wednesday and Thursday, and then I was off Friday because that's when she flew out to Arizona. Okay. okay. So, what? Tell me about all the stuff you did on Friday, or how was it? I guess before she left, like, if you know, did you take her to the airport? Oh no, Nicole picked her up. Oh, Nicole picked her up. Yep. Okay. What was you the attitude like, or what was the relationship like when she left for Arizona? It was. I mean, we were just like, like we had talked about counseling and everything, and. We knew what the uh, what the uh, sex with the baby was. We weren't gonna tell anybody until she got back, because Nicole knew. Mm -hmm. Nicole was one that like prepped everything for her, like with the bag and like a couple things like pour out a little fake, fake champagne bottle and whatnot. For which one? For, for or or the, for the for like a like a Announce. gender reveal. Type oh, gender thing, reveal. Okay. Type thing like that. Okay. So like she she did all that for us. And um, so Friday, I mean, I woke up with the whole way for the kids to wake up because she, she left pretty early that morning. And Nicole came and picked her up and she left the airport. Was it like kiss, hug, bye? Or was it kind of strained as far as? It, it was a hug. It was a hug? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was just like, you know, have a safe flight and just let me know when you get there and I'll send you pictures of the kids, like when, like throughout the day. Okay. Type thing. Okay. So, and then you said, I'm sorry, that you waited till the kids got up? Yeah, like that's what we usually do. We just wait for the wait for the kids to wake up, so they wake us up. Okay. And Bella came in the room, and she just she usually just crawls into bed and just like just falls right just falls asleep next to us. Like when she wakes up, she doesn't just get up and just go like she does. But as far as Friday goes, what exactly happened on Friday? So we're just pretty much hung out around the house, just just playing around. Just we went to like grocery store, went. To get my glasses, got some cracks in the frame. We went, went to Target. We went to King Supers to pick up the, the click list over there. I've never done that. That was fun. Did you do that? Is that yeah. your first time doing it? 
Or do you guys do Oh, no, she does it for me all the time. Oh, she does? Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, we just, like, we, we have made a little day of it and everything. And so, and I'm sorry, do your kids go to preschool or daycare? For roof. Is that a preschool or a daycare? It's a little bit of both, depending on your age. Okay. Because, like, they have eight, up to six months. Okay, so what are your kids considered? In it's, the um, preschool or in the... Early, Celeste is, like, early preschool one. Early preschool one. And Celeste, or Bella is... Uh, Pre-K one. So is it like you can drop your kids off before school starts, like, and then they will like oh, yeah. have a daycare, and then you oh yeah, it's like, well, it's like they go into like like they'll have like a room, like like sometimes they'll only have a few teachers there at six thirty, six thirty in the morning type thing. Oh, okay, you're right, and they combine most of the classes and stuff because mm -hmm. there's not that many kids there. So where is this Primrose at? Is that in Erie? In Erie. Yeah. Okay. Is there only one there in Erie? Yeah, I mean, Primrose is like a chain of the school, but like right. there, there's another one like in Thornton or something like that. And so there's only one in Erie. Yeah, there was, there was a teacher work day that day, so that's why they couldn't go. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, so Friday they would normally go? Mm-hmm. Okay. They would normally go. That's why like, I took that day off because like... You didn't have any daycare? Because mm, she was leaving so early and whatnot. But yeah, we, we just played around that day. Mm -hmm. And just like, just I mean, we went to a couple of different places and... And do the kids go five days a week there? Or how often do they go to Oh, they, yeah, five days a week. Five days a week. And what yeah. is the normal time normal time that they go from from like eight to um, depending on when they kinda wake up and get ready, usually about seven thirty, like four. Seven thirty to four? Yeah. Okay. Somewhere around there. And is this because um Shanann is doing her thrive stuff and you're at work at the mm -hmm. oil field? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's like when they're at school she can really concentrate. Sure. All that stuff right now. Does she pretty much work from home? Oh yeah, she can work from anywhere. But does she normally work like from a computer at home or is she... She just works from her phone. I mean, she uses her a computer, phone. but she uses her phone mostly. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can do anything from those things. That's crazy. Okay, so you hang out, you guys are running errands, Target, um, grocery store, that kind of stuff. Um, what time do you think you get home on Friday? Probably about... I would say probably about 4.30 or so. Okay. And do you guys do anything else Friday night? And just normal things like, you know, just getting ready for bed or have dinner, getting ready for bed type thing. Okay. Did you talk to Shanann that night? Yeah. Night? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Would you have FaceTimed her with the girls or? Oh, no, but when she's away and stuff like that, like, we don't, we don't FaceTime the girls. They really react to that. Oh, because they'd be upset. They'd be upset, talk. yeah. Like, Bella was asking a lot about her. Okay. So did she talk to them? Like, as far as on a phone call? No, or no, no, no. There was no contact between her and the kids while she was gone. And that's, just, that's, just, that's normal. Like, okay. like, like if she, like, like last time, there was a Thrive event that was, like, she went to Canada. And, like, it was, like, we do not talk to the girls. Like, they, they would literally, like, have, like, a cry fest for, like... You're like, I can't handle that, so... Well, I mean, she knows, like, yeah. and, like, it would really make her cry, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it was so... Just one of those deals. Right, so what time do you think they go to bed on Friday night? Probably about... No, probably about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Okay, and what did you do Friday night? I went downstairs and worked out and just kind of chilled out around the house and... So your weight uh, is in your basement? Yes. Okay. So you went and worked out, and then what? Do you, how do you chill out? Like, what do you normally do? Sports center. Sports center, and just like if there's a cool movie on to watch or something like that. And did you have anyone over on Friday, or mm -hmm. anyone stop by, or mm -hmm. anything like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what happens Saturday morning? Saturday morning, kind of the same thing. Like Bella. Bella came in bed again. Like some like when she wakes up. She comes into bed and just kind of lays next to me and then just kind of waiting for CC to wake up type thing. And then I was going to go to Costco that day, but she didn't say she'd just do it when she, when she got back. I go back on Monday to get some chicken or vegetables and stuff like that. But I got most of everything from that click list, the King Supers. I was like hung out of the house and played outside and before it got too hot outside. And just played in the playroom and did some things around the house because it gets so hot out there like we couldn't go to the park because they were doing like some drainage thing and they had everything dug up and 
whenever it does rain, it just like pulls up really high. And it was just one of those deals. Because you're in a newer neighborhood, is that right? Uh, it was, uh, our house was built in 2013. Oh, okay. But there was already houses there. I think those houses have been there for a little while. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you guys come in or you're hanging around the house, playing around the house. So what happens around dinner time? So McKenna, or sorry, Jeremy Lindstrom, his one of his daughters, McKenna, uh, watched the girls that night. I went to a Rockies game. Okay. Yeah, Who did you go to the Rockies game with? I was um, people from work. And who did you go with from work? It was um, so it was Cody and. You have a lot of names too, just because I don't know who these people are. Oh yeah, I was like Cody Bourgeois and. Yeah, it's because it was a raffle that we had from work. Oh, okay. So it was just, it was a work function, but it was with Cody Bourgeois and uh, Sam Sam LaRue. Those two guys? Yeah. Okay. So just yeah. three of you guys went? Yeah. Yeah, and then I came home about 11. Did they win? Uh, yeah, it was a walk-off. We went home running in the bottom of the ninth. Nice. So this was Saturday night, right? Saturday night. So what time did you actually leave to go to the Rockies game? It was like 4, 5 o'clock. Did the game start at 7 or? 6.10. 6.10? Yeah, did I got done. and eat dinner? Or? Yeah, the lazy dog. At the lazy dog? Yeah. Who did you eat dinner with? Not the same people. Oh, okay. Yeah, so got down there, the Rockies game, came back about 11 or so, stopped by at the uh, gas station next to the house, got some money from McKenna, gave it to her. What gas station is that? Uh, the one right by our house. Do you know what kind it is? or? Conoco. Okay. I think it's it's, uh, it's next to a Pinocchio's restaurant. Okay. So got is that ATM inside? Yes. Obviously? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we got that. Um, talked to Shanae on the way home. From the Rockies game? Yeah. Did you, how did you get there and back? With the Lexus. Oh, with the Lexus. Yeah. So did you pick up anyone on the way? Did you give rides mm -hmm. to anyone? No. You just met them down there? Yeah. Where were your seats? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. That was on like the third baseline. Like good seats? They're decent. First level kind of? Uh, thing? like 10 rows up probably somewhere there. Nice. It was not too bad. I, How much did you pay for the raffle? <laughs> oh, it was just like just something to enter. Oh. Something to enter in there. Nice. But it was, they always have something like for a golf tournament. I'm not a golfer or anything like that, but it was just something to enter. Do you and your like people you work with get them together every once in a while? Not, I mean, not not mainly. This was just like a random thing. It was just something I never won anything. So it was just like one of those random things. Did you pick them to go? Like no, they, they, no, I was. I just. I won that one. Ticket. All three of you won yeah. that ticket. Yeah. And did anyone so, else meet you guys there from work? Or? No, no, it was just a random thing. Okay. Yeah, but the um, when we got home, I called Shanann. Um, I asked her how much to give McKenna, and she was like, "It's like, do I give her sixty? Do I give her fifty? It's like, just give her fifty, because it's like, okay, don't want to overpay her." I'm like, okay. When I get there, and uh, the expedition was there, I think that was. That was Jeremy's wife's car, and uh, I gave her the money. And the girls were fine. They were they ate pizza that I ordered pizza for him that night, for him like that. And then then after that I went inside, went to bed, and then did were the girls in bed? Oh yeah, yeah they were they were totally passed out. And was the mom there to help McKenna or no? I think she dropped off the car because I didn't see anybody in the car when I pulled up. Oh, McKenna can drive. I don't even know how old McKenna is. And she's like, she had the wrong car. She had the Jeep. Oh, okay. But uh, they uh, either I didn't see anybody in the car as far as her mom was, but I think they just dropped her car off. So like when I got home, they could just. Okay. So and I hate to keep going back to the rocket team, but you were with your coworkers there. Did you mention to either of them about you know issues that you're having oh, with Lord, your no. wife or no. anything like that? No. Are these not those type no, of people no. that you would talk to like that? No. no. Okay. Nothing like that. Nothing at all like that. Okay. It's like it's as personal type things. I don't. I didn't want like people at work really knowing like anything that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Only person I really told my foreman just because like you know. If is that who is that? Luke Apple. Oh, okay. And what did you tell him? I just told him like you know like I wanted him to be aware like if if he felt like my mind was not on task that like you know tell me and just send me home type thing. Mm -hmm. If because like at work. When you're there, like you need to be, because there's so much pressure, like around. I mean, like I mean, not like pressure, like like well head pressure, yeah, like that kind of like pressure. Dangerous. Yeah, you oh, you stand in front of like a, like a master valve or like a needle valve that could be open or something like that. 
So like you don't want to be like a hundred pounds could kill you. But I mean like I work around stuff that has like So did he ask you why would your mind not be right? Well, I told him like, you know, my wife and I are you know, we're going through a few things right now and that like, you know, separation has been on the table. Like I want you to know like I'm gonna be my mind's gonna be on task. And I want him, I wanted him to know like, you know, if you see like anything that I'm doing that you don't like, just let me know. Cause I want I, my foreman. He's the one that's gonna like. He's the one doing my performance reviews. He's gonna be. He's my boss. Is he out there when you're working and stuff? He's in the office mainly, but he's one of the foremen that likes to go out to the field. Cause he may see you out there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like he likes to like if he has like meetings or whatnot. Like he likes to. Or when he when he's done with meetings, he likes to get out. Yeah. So what was his reaction to you when you told him that? It's like just you know just let me know if anything happens and like you know like oh. Well, I won't, won't tell anybody on the team or anything like our team, because like, I said it's a personal issue. So like you know, I'll just keep me in the loop. Okay. Type deal. And when you get home from the Rockies game, both girls are in their own bed. Oh yeah. They always sleep in their own bed. Oh yeah. Okay. They so do they have separate bedrooms? Yes. Okay. Jack and Jordan bathroom. Okay. Jack and, Jack and Jill. Jill. Okay. So tell me about um, Sunday morning when you wake up. So Sunday morning, we uh, wake up like like normal and like Bella actually goes into Cece's room and wakes her up this time. Okay. So it happens. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that happens. And then we go downstairs and watch Bubble Guppies and stuff like that. And uh, I put in bed a little early that day because Jeremy's son, uh, Caden, called Buddy, he's uh, turned four. Wait, are you talking about Sunday night already? No, oh. it's like Sunday afternoon. Oh, you put them in bed for a nap? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they have a nap in the middle of the day. That's the best, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they, um, we go over there after a nap, I wake them up, we go straight there. What time is that, you think? So the part of the one, I woke them about 12.30. That deal. Do you guys have a present for this little guy? Or yep. How would you get the present? Oh, we went to Target that day. And I got him a little dinosaur car. Okay. Yep. So earlier before their nap, you yep. went to Target? Okay. Yep. <laughs> when they got the dinosaur car. Do you go anywhere else besides Target? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Not that Sunday, no. Okay. Like, as we got back, it was about that time, and they had some, for like that little early lunch, they had some cold, they wanted cold pizza. So, that was their deal. It was the left pizza left over from the other night. Okay. So, uh, they ate that, and they went and took a nap. And then after that, we went to Jeremy's house, and we were there for, like, whoop, 115 to like probably 4 35 o'clock out there it was like i didn't know it was going to be like a water balloon like pool thing that little mini pool out there water balloons and everything so maybe not like you didn't bring some shoes i didn't i didn't know i didn't have swimsuits or water shoes with me or anything like that okay. so like it was uh you just get their clothes wet yeah okay time to do they love that oh uh, no cc C C loves loves just getting in the water bella was more like Taking the water balloons out and just like you know spraying them everywhere mm. type deal. Okay. So you get home about what time you think? Uh, about four thirty five o'clock. Okay. So what happens after that? Um, immediately just put them in the shower and try to wash them off because they had you know sand and everything. Cause they had a little sandbox over there like with their little playground. And uh, so I just put them in the shower immediately, just wash them off. They can usually like wash their hair by themselves. And whatnot. So, so are you in the shower with them? I'm on the outside. On the outside. Yeah, I'm just like I let them kind of do their thing and wash them up and everything, and get them right off, put some lotion on, pajamas, go downstairs, they want pizza again, so cold pizza. What kind of pajamas did you put on them? Oh, uh, just some nightgowns. What did those look like? It's probably, I think Celeste had like a pink one with like little, like a drawing of like a bird or something like that. Okay. And uh, Bella, it might have been one that said like believe on it, or that was a multicolored one, might have a unicorn on it. Okay. They have and so many of those nightgowns. And now, is it a dress or are they pants? No, 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 it's like a dress. Like, but it's like yeah, it just kind of like falls down to their knee. It's hot, so they sleep hot, they sweat like crazy. Okay. Do they take their, their pajamas off at all during the night? No. Cece has a, a nighttime diaper. She sleeps in a nighttime diaper. 
But she doesn't, I mean, as far as getting hot and stuff, they don't like strip their clothes off in the middle of the night because they get hot or anything. No. Or do they? No, they, I've never seen them do that. I mean, unless they have pants on. Like if they have like a, like, uh, they have like their mermaid pajamas that have like a t shirt and pants, they'll take that off. The shirt part? The pants. Oh, the pants. Yeah, because they get so hot. Right. So the, uh, I've never heard that yet. <laughs> that noise. Great stuff about the thing, yeah. <laughs> Is that one of those beeping? No, I was just like, oh. maybe it was like the basket hit or something like that. No, I wasn't touching it. No, like in another room. <laughs> oh, okay. They always have that. Yeah. They always have that. Um, okay, so you get them in their pajamas. Um, and feed them dinner. And yeah. FaceTime uh, Shannon's parents. So not Shannon, just her parents. Yeah, her parents. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so they uh, they FaceTime them for a little while, and after that they sit on their couch. They have a mini Mouse one. Cece has a mini Mouse couch, and Bella has a Sophia the first couch, and they chill there and give them a little snack. And Celeste has some little wafers. Bella has some chips, and then they each wanted the switch after they were done. So sorry, uh, Bella had some little wafers after that, and Cece had some like cheeses or something like that. Okay. And then after that, let's brush your teeth and got them ready for bed and they're both using potty and like they normally do and put them in bed. Okay. Do they normally go to bed right away or? Well, they, they do lay in bed. Like they don't get out like once the rain machines are on and lights are out. Like Bella came out twice that time just because she knew like Shannon was coming home. Like I told her like, all right, she'll be home Monday mm -hmm. type thing because like Shannon's not going to just go in there and wake her up at like in the middle of the night type mm -hmm. thing. So like I told her she'd be here and she knew like, wake up. yeah, she knew like, are you tired yet? Like she comes out like, she home yet? Like, no, oh, baby, just when you wake up, okay, when you wake up, okay. About two, about two times she came out asking about that, but Celeste hasn't, she hasn't done that yet. So as far as, um, you said you talked to Shannon at least one time to ask about how much to pay McKenna. Yeah. Did you talk to Shanann any other time? Oh yeah, like during the day Sunday. Okay, and how was that? I was just fine, just talking about the kids and like, you know, texting back and forth. I don't have much signal over at Jeremy's house, there's like a dead zone on Erie Parkway over there somewhere. Did you send her pictures of the kids yep. at the party and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Yep. Okay. And yeah. what did she, was she happy about that? Was she I was just like, yeah, I missed, well, I missed them type thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, I sent I her pictures while, like, while she was gone. What about like phone calls? Did you guys have any phone calls? Yeah, we had probably, yeah, we had a few. I couldn't call her over there because it was bad signal area. I barely get the t uh, text messages out. But yeah, I mean, you didn't call her at Jeremy's, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, okay. I couldn't. Cause but the other time, like Saturday night. Oh yeah, like everything. Yeah, we just you know talking as everything went and everything like that. And once I got him home, like on um, after the after the party and got him to bed and everything, told you know about this. Like she knows you're coming home and she like she's ready and everything and. She was texting me like about like cause the power went out I guess in Arizona because of the dust storms and her friend uh, Addie and Cindy like they paid for dinner and stuff like that and um it, Nicole and her were at the airport and Addie's plane got delayed and they're hoping theirs weren't getting delayed but it ended up getting delayed. So what like if you could have taken her pulse then like how was she as far as communicating with you was she you know. Like same old Shanann, or was she still kind of upset, or it, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's or kind of hard to tell through the, through that those texts. But like, I, she was ready to get home and see the girls and, and just be home. But as far as her relationship with you, how did that feel to you? I mean, it, it felt. I mean, it felt like she did when she left. Like it felt like you know, like she was like in that state of mind where like okay, she decided to be home. Like maybe she would, like. It's kind of hard to really tell, but through a text, but like she wanted to get home and see us because she she had been away like she when she was in North Carolina for six weeks and then she comes home for two days and goes to Arizona like she only been home for like two days mm -hmm. in a six and a half week span so she was just ready to be home be with us and just kind of like just be around us. Mm -hmm. So what time was she originally supposed to be home? Eleven. Oh, Eleven. Yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously that gets delayed till yeah. whenever. Yep. Uh, she got or... home. She didn't get home to like two. She didn't leave there to like eleven. I think they're an hour behind. Okay. In Phoenix. Okay. At this time of year, cause did they don't. Did she text you when she landed, or, or did you know? No, she, she texted me that it was delayed, and I think she texted me when she took off, but she didn't text me when she landed. 
Okay. Had his belter like get in the bed. Okay. And you said that was around two, you think? Two, two. And you know there was a doorbell thing, is that what you said? Yeah. At one forty eight? Mm -hmm. It's describe the doorbell thing. So it's got like whenever like a proximity, like she walks up. Like a motion thing? Yeah. Okay. And now is that tied to like a home security system or is it just a, a single doorbell thing? The doorbell like records it on to the uh, our control panel. So it's all tied together? Yeah. Like garage alarms, yeah, alarms, everything. Alarms, yeah. window, yep. whatever. Well there's no windows, but just like okay. there's a living room like motion thing and a basement motion. And like we have a uh, open and shut uh sensors on the basement door and the sliding or sliding door and obviously the front door and both garage doors. So is it any time they're open or just if they're open they for open. an extended both. period of time? So like uh, if once if a door is left open, it'll, after a certain amount of time, it'll say uh, the front door at 28, 25, so trail has been left open. So did it alert you that she was outside using the keypad to get in when she got home or? No, it just it picked her up walking up to the door. And did it alert you that? When I saw it the next morning. When okay, I, when so I like it wasn't enough that it woke you up. To oh no, no, it, it, it's, it's very like a faint like ding type thing. And what's the living room one? What's that for? It's just a motion detector. Like if like you set alarm to away, like you know nobody's gonna be in the house. That's you know stuff like that. It'll pick that up and set alarm off. Does it? Is it on when you're home though? No, like we have, if you set it to away while you're home, you're just gonna check the alarm. Okay. So you don't have any of those like active, I guess, when you're. Active. Well, well, it's it's always active, but it's not set to. You can set it away and stay or disarmed, but it's still gonna pick it up. Oh, okay. Like it'll like if you look on my phone, like go to the Vivin app, it'll show you, like uh, living room motion is detected. So and I guess so just for my own knowledge, did you actually look at that? Obviously, when she went missing, and the girls, did you look at your living room alarms and that? I mean, to see if there was. Stuff going it, on it doesn't like once once because we had so many like like doorbell trips because it was messing up so much as far as like little things setting it off. It only I can only go to the history so far. So you That's don't it. pay for the cloud storage for that. No. Okay. Did, is that an option? I they had never given it to me. Okay. But like. So how far did it go back? This is I, I'm not sure how many like different like events that it can store. Like it'll have notifications, you can scroll a bell, it eventually just ends. I'm not sure how long it'll actually keep it. So when you when this all happened, did you look on there and it like The only thing that I saw that was really strange was that uh when I left it said uh the garage door stayed open. And no so if that was on there at five whatever in the morning, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't the other stuff still be there too that happened after? Like if there was motion in the living room or the basement or whatever. It should have been the only thing. There was like a basement door left open and garage door left open. Oh, when but was the basement door left open? It was about the same time. Five twenty-seven. Yeah, it was like it like within a minute. And then what was the other one? Did you say? That garage door left open. Hmm. Was the basement door open when you went back? Not that I remember. Like when I got there, everything was shut. Garage door was shut. Basement door was shut. Hmm. What? Like you go out to the basement? Like uh, the basement? Is walk is, out? No. Oh. That's a garden level. Okay. So there's like the windows. I mean, if you can you can see the backyard. It's not like one of the ones that's like a normal one where it's like a deep, like a deep dive, like where you can't. You have to look up to see like the 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 level of the, of the ground. So what's the basement door then? I guess I'm. Oh, so the basement door is so like when you walk in the group like you walk into the house through the garage and then as you're walking to the living room you take a right and then that's the basement door that leads down in the basement oh so that door has an alarm that has a sensor it tells you when it's open because you can since it's a garden level basement the windows i mean you could i mean you can walk you can walk into the like the the backyard and you can open a window you just I mean you don't have to dip down you just open a window and you can walk in type thing so there's an alarm on the interior there's a little, there's, door because yeah. because like you could I mean okay, so the intruder came in yeah through the, the window yeah like stuff like that okay okay and that one went off too like yeah. was that before the garage or after the garage which I think one was, it was first one was at five twenty six one was at five twenty seven 
I think the 527 one was the garage and the 526 was the basement left open. Hmm. Do you get those a lot? Or do you guys do you guys even hang out in the basement usually or? I'm usually down there just to like work out, but I didn't work out that morning. So like I'm it definitely wasn't open when I left. Mm hmm Okay. Sorry. We're getting off track. Um so she the the ring doorbell goes to your phone. Like how do you get log into that system? Your it's just an app. It's just an app. What what is the app called? Yeah. And does she have that app as well? Yep. Okay. She should be on the phone. Is it your login? Is it her login? You guys Hers. have oh it's her login? Yep. So is it her email and password? What is her email? Uh she now watch it's email back on. Okay. Do you know what her password is for that? It should be like four two eight four nine one five capital F over case W. Say that one more time. Uh, uh four two eight four nine one five capital S lower case W. Okay. Is that what she uses for other stuff or Yes. Okay. Yes. Kind of common. Yeah, her <laughs> yeah. go to password. Yeah, it's a phone number. Okay. Okay. Um oh that makes sense. So it's a phone number, not hers, but it's a phone number. Right. Okay. So I know, like, I have a ring doorbell, and like our flag will shut it off sometimes. You know. Yeah, that's why I took, I took my flag down because, like, it kept like after we had like the camera reset and it wasn't working for a little bit, it was picking up. I thought it was the flag, but like, it wasn't. It was like picking up just like the tree moving around yeah. and bush, like a like a branch or something or the just shadow or something. Like, yeah, I feel like yeah. I said that too. So. Um, have you, is that the system that was installed in the home when you moved in, or is that something that you guys we did. installed? When installed. did you guys install that? I would guess two years ago. Two years ago? Okay. I think. So are you completely asleep when she gets home?